Hello you fans, what are here and welcome to an updated deck profile with Blue Eyes. Since the new support release of Felibrand support and the new Agent White Stone, I thought I'd update the deck since I have got to a state where I really enjoy it. Um, this is more of a control build over like OTK builds which you would commonly see as Blue Eyes is more of an OTK deck. But I prefer control, it's my playstyle, so I've built it to do that. Controlling with the base effects of Felgrand and White Spirit, or even Act Brave to the point where my opponent's going to be disrupted with Couple of Haunted very effectively. And there's also a lot of other things that can disrupt my opponent, like Dark Matter Dragon banishing three cards from their deck, or Clear. Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, which in theory can just negate all monster effects, yet I, I have not bring, been able to bring it out. But it has the option there, thanks to Blue Eyes, Spirit Dragon, and Level 1 Tuners that we have a hell of abundance to it. Not to mention that Sage Knight searches effect failure, so that is pretty good. So yeah, let's uh, go straight into the deck profile. We have Triple Blue Eyes White Dragon. Only the original will do. Because I don't like the other variants, I wouldn't run the other variants, I would always run the original. Just because it's it just keeps with the theme. Any other dragon to me, blue eyes any other blue eyes variant to me, doesn't look as good as this iconic masterpiece. So yeah, we need to still run triple of this dragon since it is the main card you bring out with Maiden. You can search through it with White Stone, and it's just so necessary in the deck. You can't really play the Blue Eyes deck without the Blue Eyes with Dragon. Then we have two alternatives. Originally I had it to three, but I've quit down to two just because I don't like to clog with it. I have the two main ways of searching for it, and that's with the Melodies of the Awakening Dragon. But it doesn't always have to be there. I do usually draw into it. It is trading fodder as well. And this can be added back as well from, from the graveyard to the hand with Agent White Stone's Banishment effect. So there's a lot of ways to re recuperate the losses if I trade it in, or have it at 2 in this deck. Alternative has the ability to destroy a mon target a monster on your opponent controls and destroy it by giving up its attack that turn. You probably would be exceed summoning the time you would use that effect, or super summoning. Then we have one Felgrand, the Great Dragon, Dr Great Divine Dragon. Felgrand has the effect of when it's special summoned from the graveyard, it can banish one monster. And the opponent controls are in their graveyard and gain attack and defense equal to that monster's level or rank times 100. Which is quite effective, say you're going against uh, an opponent who prospers with Talonites. Say Talonites, uh, for example, they want to get their Deneb back. So you can use Felgrand to banish that Deneb and stop them recuperating their pluses that they would want to do. It also has the effect of when it destroys the opposing monster by battle, it can special summon a level 7 or 8 dragon type from either player's graveyard. Which could be great, especially if you're using this in a pendulum matchup, because you can reborn it, can this the prominence, and screw some over very royally. So Felgrand has a lot of pluses in this deck, and it really works since it's the control variant. It can really disrupt your opponent's play with Call of Haunted. Then we have one white spirit dragon. Originally this was at two, but I've bumped it down to one just because I don't want to dead draw it. It is also again a trading target. I have a total of seven trading targets, but I can add back them with uh, Asian White Stone, so there's very a lot of a lot of things you can do with this. Blue Eyes um, Blue Eyes White White Card Dragon, I think it's now called. Uh, has the ability to be a non-monster while in the hand in the graveyard so you can use it with dragon shrine to deck fin or you can just well basically you can reborn it with um uh Zurai's silver dragon so very good and when it's normal or special summon you can tag it with a spell trap on your opponent controls and banish it that is very good it can also tag out to summon out a blue eyes from your hand, which is again very good, particularly if your opponent's targeting this monster with a card effect. Then they can jump out of the way and summon out a new big bee stick for your opponents who have to get over. Which could be very good. It's also very good disruption because Call of Haunted Reborn that banish, say, a good continuous spell that they needed. So marvelous there. And then we have Ark Brave Dragon, another card from the Felgrand structure deck. 
which is very, very overpowered. If a special summon from the graveyard, you can banish as many face up spell trap cards from your opponent controls and it gains 200 attack for each card it banished that way. Which is very good against pendulums because they need their scales and if and they would pro rather have them destroyed than banished. Very much so. Also, when you send it to the graveyard, you can tag one little seminar at each dragon type in your graveyard during your next st standby phase and special summon it, which can be very good to get out um, Felgrand or White Spirit, depending on what you really need at that point. So, very good. It's also a great, co great card to send with um, Dark Matter. You basically would send Felgrand, Archmorave, and Ancient White Stone as long as all those targets are available, because that would give you two special summons. You could also send your protect Keeper of the Shrine at that point to protect yourself. And speaking of Keeper of the Shrine, it's a one of in this deck because it is brilliant. It's a great way of protecting yourself if you um, if you suspect your monsters are going to be destroyed by battle or card effect. Because when a dragon is, is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can, um, you can basically special summon it from your hand or your graveyard, which means it's good discard fodder for Twin Twisters, it's a good discard fodder for Melody of the Awakening Dragon, and it's a good defense. If any of those monsters were normal monsters, you can add one of them back to your hand, which is very good for Blue Eyes White Dragon, since you kind of need that in your hand as well, because you have it trading for its targets and White Spirit for its targets. So, very good. I want Tolt Alternative as well. So I do like Keeper of the Shrine in this deck. Then we have two Ancient White Stone. Ancient White Stone is a new White Stone essentially, because when it's sent to the graveyard during the end phase, if it was sent there this turn, you can switch some of the blue eyes from your deck. Simple as that. That's what this really should have done. It is just amazing in that sense, because you can sit it with Dark Matter and get instant blue eyes. Loads of deck thinning, loads of possibilities. Its second effect is very good as well. You can banish it from your graveyard to tag one blue eyes in your graveyard as your hand, which means you have trading fodder and other fodders that you would possibly need. It also adds back your alternative dragons when they've not been correctly summoned, say they've been sent to the graveyard by trading. So that's very, very good. Then we have one white stone legend. This in the deck is really not to need anymore. It's great that it's a monetary effect. You can add a blue eyes from your deck to your hand, but I really don't use it anymore. I still need it as a one-off because there are times when I need a blue eyes in my hand and I only have the alternatives. So I can send the white stone in order to recruit a blue eyes to my hand. However, most times I will not need this monster. Then we have Triple Sage Knight. Sage Knight does a great combo with Maiden as you summon Maiden, target her with Sage Knight's effect, Maiden goes off, especially some two blue eyes from your deck, and then go down matter, which is brilliant. But in the alternative case, you can normal summon it and add any light tuner that's level one from your deck to your hand. So you can search out white stones, Maiden, or even effect Veiler, which is really absurd to be honest. But it's a very good card. It's very needed at free. The other knights that came from the eyes of blue, I believe it was priest and guard, they really aren't very worth it anymore. Sage Knight and Maiden combo are the best bits. And plus with the Felgrand support, they've kind of been outranked. So they're no longer very viable in this deck. They're more clogging than anything. Then Maiden. Maiden is always used, going to be used in the Blue Eyes deck because she is very good. She, when she is targeted by attack or a card effect, she can um, basically sort out Blue Eyes from your deck to your hand, from your deck, hand or graveyard. So that is absolutely brilliant as you can get your Blue Eyes that have probably been already got out of the deck by this point. Or you can go in a straight defense, it can also negate the attack that is targeted for attack. So. That's also very good to recruit blue eyes. You can use very, very much in it as a stall to stop your opponent from attacking you because they know a blue eyes will drop out of the board. So they need to have a backup plan to get rid of that blue eyes before they go into Maiden. So yeah, she's good as a stall technique. Then we have triple effect veiler, searchable and destructive. What more can we say? Then, to Gospel of Revival, ta they target a dragon that is level 7 or 8 from your graveyard and special summon it. 
which is very good. It's a nice little monster reborn. Well, pseudo monster reborn. So you have options to reborn Felgran, White Spirit, or Arcbrave on the turn when you're probably going to be using them, or even Blue Eyes or Dragon itself. So a lot of plus in this. It also has a secondary effect. If a Dragon type would be destroyed by battle, card effect you match it. This card instead. So it has a Void Seal like effect to protect your monsters, and that's extra plus just for this deck. Then we have one one day of peace, just a consistency card there. Triple training for consistency, very good with the white stones. Went back to this originally. I dropped this uh, midway through testing blue eyes because I didn't like it as much. However, with white stone, it really does work a lot more. So I've gone back to it. I'm, I'm still enjoying it. Then we have Triple Dragon Shrine. People say this is a bit overkill to have Triple Dragon Shrine, but I I do love Dragon Shrine access. I do love to send my Felgrand or White Spirit or Arcbrave to the graveyard whenever I need it to, or even White, uh, White Spirit to get another one of them into the graveyard, so you can set, basically send these two, get White Spirit out in your opponent's standby phase. Very good. Or you can send your Ancient White Stone, summon it out of the deck. And again, very good. So why wouldn't you put a Felish Burial? at um, more than one in the deck. So, yeah, that's essentially Dragon Shrine. Um, then we have two Melody of the Awakening Dragon Skywalker card. Add two dragons that have 3,000 attack or more, or 2,500 and 2,500 defense or less. So, that essentially means you'll add either one of each, or you will have already have a Blue Eyes in your hand and add the other two for further summonings later on the duel. So, very good to recruit two cards for one loss. Then we have one Foolish Burial because it's Foolish Burial, two Twin Twisters to, because this deck doesn't really lose from any support, any uh, balance from discarding, you can discard one of these ones, and Twin Twister blows away two back row, so pluses everywhere. One Silver's Cry for the times when you need to go for game, and you can special summon it during the battle phase, so that's always very good. Then we have one Light Guidance. Light Guidance is a new spell card that allows you to basically reborn a blue eyes from your deck if you have three or more of them in your graveyard. Then that monster's effect is negated. It can also attack for the amount of blue eyes in your graveyard. So usually you would have these three in the graveyard, possibly one of these, and possibly one of these. You would get probably about four attacks on a Light Guidance blue eyes. And that is very good, very good to seal the duel with. So, like I was very needed in this deck, very needed in this deck. However, I don't think I would run more than one of them, just because it can only reborn Blue Eyes, it can't really reborn Felgrind or Arcbrave. So, I'll just probably keep it at one in this deck. Good finishing move. Then, Triple Call the Haunted to disrupt my opponent's plays, as this is a control style Blue Eyes deck. So, yeah, onto the extra deck. We have one Aegean Sea Castrum, one of my favorite Exceed monsters in the whole game. It has the ability to disrupt your opponent's extra deck by banishing one random card from there, and then it gains attack equal to that monster's attack. It will then replace that attack next time it uses effect. It also has the secondary effect of ta if your opponent controls a monster that is either Fusion, Synchro, or Exceed. That is the same as one of the Banshee cards in their management zone. Say one of the cards you sent through this effect, you can return that card to the extra deck and then destroy the monster on the field. So this gets around Castell and monsters like Ignis do as well that don't activate on summon, which can be very, very disruptive. Then we have one Divine Dragon Knight Felgrand for monster negation, Tachyon Dragon for those times when you're going to be beating down some monsters that are going to be continuously using effects in the battle phase. Then we have number 38, Hope Habjur Dragon Titanic Galaxy. A very good card against pendulums because when a spell trap, well, when a spell card is activated, you can negate the activation and, acti and attach it as a material. Then it also has the other effect of changing the attack target of one of your monsters to this monster. And if this face of Exceed Monster you control destroy, is destroyed by Battle or Card Effect, you, you can target one Exceed Monster you control, it gains attack equal to one of those destroyed monsters' attacks. So, very good. It's a very good, well rounded card that is definitely very welcome in this deck. Then we have the Dark Matter Engine. 
technically tachyon is also in that engine, but I, I can use tachyon for the other things. We have Prime Photon Dragon, which basically is just the base. Yeah, it's a 4000 beat stick, but it only does half damage to shoot our Galaxy Eyes as a material. Then we have Galaxy Eyes Full Armored Photon Dragon, which you go into when your opponent has a face of card you want to destroy. And then finally, Dark Matter as your engine, because when it exceeds summoned, you can send three dragons from your deck to the graveyard with different names to banish three monsters from your opponent's, from your opponent's deck. They get to choose those, obviously. But um, that essentially sets your graveyard up with Felgrand, Archbrave, and Ancient Stone, getting to netting you two special summons from that sum from that effect. Also, you can detach your material and you can attack two twice on monsters this turn, which is a nice effect as well, but usually used for discarding detaching the material so you can use it later on. Then onto the synchro options. We have Black Rose, Moonlight Dragon. You can't bring this out legitimately in the deck, you would go through Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon to tag out into this. But in theory, you can then tune this with a level 1 tuner to bring out Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. One of the most powerful synchro monsters in existence now. It has the effect that when another monster activates its activates this effect, you can negate the activation if you do destroy it and then gain an attack equal to that monster's attack. Which is brilliant. Then, once per turn, if it battles an opponent's level 5 or higher monster, during the damage calculation, this card gains attack equals to that monster's attack. Which is very, very powerful. Gets over a lot of high synchro monsters, because, yeah, essentially, you're gonna be over like 5,000 usually. So, Crystal Ring is just broken in this deck. But it's not very easy to get out, I should say. It's broken in general, I should say. It's not um, that easy to get out because you would need a level 1 tuner and you'd probably have Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon on the turn, probably on the field as the turn progressed. So, yeah, you can bring it out in theory, but I have yet to do so. Then we have one Cloud Castle to reborn Spirit Dragon for a nice floodgate because Spirit Dragon has the effect that it can stop Pendulum Summoning of Mass of 2 or stop Stall Charge of Mass of 2. And it can also soul drain once per turn during either player's turn. So that's brilliant. And Cloud Castle can revive this. It also has a pseudo flood floodgate effect of level 8 or lower monsters can attack on the turn they are normal or special summoned. Which is quite nice as well as a nice stall. As I said, Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon has those effects. It can also attribute itself to special summon a light, syn light synchro dragon type from your extra deck, which you would either go into Azure Eyes or Moonlight. So essentially, if you summon out Azurize, you gain it's a protection and it isn't destroyed during the end phase, whereas Moonlight would. That's why you go into Glitter Wing Synchro Dragon. No, Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon. So Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon is still very good. It requires a Blue Eyes as material, so you can't use it with Felgrand. However, you don't need a normal Blue Eyes like Azurize because it requires a normal monster. So there are ways around it. Very good. And Zurize has the effect of when it's special summon, dragon type monsters can be targeted by or destroyed by opponent's card effects until the end of the next turn. And once per turn during your standby phase, reborn a normal monster from your graveyard. Most likely blue eyes or white spirit dragon. Which is which both are very good options. And then finally one fusion monster, and that is blue eyes twin burst dragon. It can be fusion summoned by tributing your monsters. It cannot be destroyed by battle if it It can make two attacks on monsters each battle phase. And at the, at the end of the damage step, if it, just, if it didn't destroy the monster that it battled, it can banish that monster instead. So that is pretty good against um, lockdowns like area lock and defensive monsters that cannot be destroyed by battle. So yeah, that's pretty broken. But unfortunately it doesn't have any other protection, like it can't be destroyed by card effects like meals and it doesn't have any negation, so it's broken in the sense it can get over locks, but it isn't broken in the sense that it can be e that it can't be easily overcome. So yeah, I uh, hope you enjoy this deck profile. I'm not running Solemns in the deck, mainly because it's a fun deck, but you can add them in if you would like because it is still a control variant. Possibly take out one of the one day apiece, maybe the Foolish Burial, because you have three of them, and possibly a Veiler to um, put in a place that strike. Yeah, it depends. Or if you want to just go into, if you if you feel like you're going to go first turn every turn, every duel, you'll go Storm Strike as your 
playset and then Veil is in the side deck because then you can switch switch around them depending on where you're going to be going for which turn you're go which turn you're going to start on one or two so yeah thank you for watching please like subscribe if you enjoyed this and want to see further content please leave a comment below if you have any suggestions for this deck or suggestions for my channel in general thank you for watching my rants signing out